Hi, this is Will Marshall, and this is the first part of a video that uh, Mr. Bill and myself have put together explaining all the functionality of the new uh, Ableton live performance template for the APC40 we're putting together. So in this section, I'm going to cover the general layout of the template, how it's arranged, uh, the general kind of clip launching controls, and how the decks work. It's pretty straightforward, and it shouldn't take too long. So to start with, we've got uh, two decks, deck A and deck B. As you might be able to guess, these decks are on the crossfader. A is on the left, and B is on the right. Each deck is made up of uh, eight channels. You can see the eight channels for deck A here, and the eight channels for deck B here. The first five channels on each deck are stems channels. So these are channels which will have component pieces of your own original compositions, or in this case, uh, compositions from Bill and myself. You can see we've got a drums channel, bass, melodies, sounds, and edits. And these channels are all controlled using the faders down here, the first five, uh, unless I select them all. That's better. So you can see the uh, controls here. Um, when these are mixed, they all together go into the first of these effects channels here, which then goes to this one, which then goes to this one, which then goes out to the master. We have exactly the same on the right hand side. So put the crossfader over, we've got five channels and goes through these three here and goes out to the master. Pretty simple. To browse around the session, we've modified the uh, default APC40 script so that instead of moving an individual uh, row or column when you uh, push left, right, up and down, it moves in groups of eight, left or right, like that. So you switch straight between deck A and deck B. And when you go up and down, it moves in groups of five, like that. So you can see we've actually arranged it with an entire track taking up five rows there and there. It's immensely helpful. So as I mentioned, you've got the volume faders, the first five here, and you've got the cross fader, which is left, right. I can show you that. You can hear the cross fading. And if I launch another track on this side, I can cross fade between the two. Now, we also have EQ controls, and it's a single knob EQ, which is really handy. Basically, if you turn this to the left, you get the bass from the left. If you turn it all the way to right, you get the bass on the right. So, you can hear the bass there, take the bass out, you can take the bass out. It makes it very easy to kind of crossfade while turning the knob to get smooth transitions between tracks. The scene launch buttons have been modified somewhat, and instead of uh, doing the default APC40 behavior of launching an entire scene like that, what they'll actually do is launch uh, each of the clips in the first five, first five slots without launching any of the dummy clips here. So you can see if I do that, or that, and of course it will follow the clip grid around like that. Pretty straightforward. We have a master control here for master volume, and you can see here and here, we've got VU meters, or PPM meters technically, sorry Bill, <laughs> on for deck A and deck B. Up here, if the volume's loud enough on the scene launch controls, we've got a PPM master uh, meter for the master channel. Lastly, on uh, the pan knob up here, we have pan controls for several of the decks. So if I open up the mixer, so you can see the panning just there. See we've got panning here. If I bring that across you'll be able to hear it. Panning on the bass. Panning on the melodies. Panning on the sounds. You'll notice that there isn't a pan control in the edits channel. Uh, this is because edits often have their own panning work built into them. A lot of people's music, you don't actually want to pan that by hand. And the bottom knobs do the same thing, as you can see here, here, etc. On deck B. Uh, that's everything for the routing and general section. Uh, next section will be covering the effects, shot on each channel or in the dummy clips, explaining how all those work. Thank you. Hey, how's it going? Mr. Bill here, and I'm going to describe, um, or explain rather, the effects that I've designed for this uh, template. Uh, basically, 
on every single channel we have a macro rack and all of these macro racks uh, we can use to affect different layers of the sound separately and then as will said before we have these three channels here which are effects channels and i'll go through those in a second and then we also have uh three sends and these are also other uh, macro racks on there which i'll get into how to use those in a second as well so the first ones that we have are the channel effects and like i said they have a macro rack on them and uh whenever we select a channel so on the controller we can just select say drums bass melodies sounds edits whatever we want uh there's a this macro section here becomes enabled to uh, it just automatically maps to this macro rack here and we can start turning knobs and you can see it starts controlling particular things on this macro rack. Uh, these uh, macro controls here on the rack uh, map to a bunch of different controls in uh, in this device chain. So you don't actually have to think about what these are controlling on the devices. You can just turn any of them and they'll usually sound relatively decent. They won't just sound all crazy and you don't have to worry about them stopping the sound or anything. So if I just um, play the drums and start turning any of these knobs, you'll hear that there's some drum related effects being applied to the to this, uh, audio. So that's kind of the effects that are on the drums. They're like glitchy, dirty effects. Uh, if I stop that clip and we go to the bass, you can see there's another uh, bass effects rack which is slightly different to the drum effects. So if we play this. So that's really fun. Uh, then the melodies, again, they have a different rack on them. The sounds have a different one and the edits have a different one. Um, again, they're all... Um, effects designed for the particular layers that are in the in the track uh, then we have these three effects channels and the first two uh, dummy clip effects so as will described in the routing all of these <coughs> um, channels here the the channels with the layers on them they all go to effects one which is uh, slicing effects then effects one goes to effects two which is filtering effects and then effects three goes to sends and the send channels i'll go through in a sec but the ones we're looking at the moment are effects one and two so if i play anything on these audio channels and then i start triggering these clips here um you won't actually hear the effect because we've created two dry wet controls with these faders here <clears throat> and these go between at the bottom position a completely dry signal to the top position which is a completely affected signal so if i play the main drop from this tune and then I start triggering a couple of these clips and then I start uh, messing with the positioning of these faders, you'll hear the effects start to um, start to affect the audio. So that's the idea with that, you just trigger effects and then go between turning them on and off with these faders or you can kind of uh, ease into them. So for instance, if I have a filter here um, and then I, I can ease into the filtering and then just turn it off again by turning it back down. So that's kind of handy. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, another type of effect that we have on every single channel uh, are selected with the record arms and what they are is an effect called fade to gray which we've put in every single rack you'll see here there's a, a fade to gray rack and every time you press one of these buttons it uh, toggles on or off it's like a momentary effect and then we have a dry wet control for that with this last fader here so basically all you have to do to use that effect is select a channel um, again with the track select or actually you don't even have to do it with the track select all the record arms are already mapped to it so I mean, if I just shut this down and I just play, say, the bass, I can have the drum selected and still use that effect by triggering there and then turning the dry wet up. So if we just listen to the bass. So you can hear that it um, you can hear that it kind of like fades the effect into 
um, it fades the audio into nothing by using like a delay and an EQ that, that kind of cuts all the frequencies. So if we do it on the drums, it sounds kind of cool as well. And of course you can select as many as you want. Uh, you've only got four fingers, but you could probably throw a thumb in there as well and get five. Um, yeah, you can select any of those that you want and they're just momentary. So you hold it down and it's affecting it. Then you have the dry wet. If the dry, uh, if the dry wet's all the way in the down position, it won't do anything. So you have to remember to turn that up as well. You could just leave that up if you want and then just, um, or like probably around halfway and then just trigger these effects whenever you like, or you can, uh, trigger it and, and play with the dry wet. So if we hear that in context, it's something like this. So, so far with what we've gone over, uh, we can conjoin all the techniques of uh, triggering momentary effects using dummy clips and using macros all at the same time. And it's it's really kind of, you know, everything's really close and, and we've streamlined everything. So it's really easy to do that. So for instance, if I want to affect my drums whilst doing some fade to gray stuff in breaks, as well as doing some dummy clip stuff, I can just uh, select um, select a couple of dummy clips and then we can start affecting things like this. So yeah, like just with all those controls there, you can do quite a little bit. Um, and then the last effects that we have are these send effects. So if we, um, I'll just stop all these clips for the moment. If we trigger this top one, you can see that it says channel. And what that'll do is that'll just send the audio through this channel here. We also have a reset button, which uh, we've replaced with stop all clips. So if you just hit stop all clips, it'll trigger this reset scene. And this just triggers both of these, uh, these channel <coughs> clips, which just sends the <clears throat> the audio from the sends through this channel. Sometimes if you don't select this reset thing, uh, the audio will go through all the sends and stuff will get really loud. So you don't want to do that. Uh, the first thing that you want to be selecting is, is the top one just to make sure that things are going to go through that, um, that send channel just here. So if we trigger, say, just some drums for um, just for explanation purposes, and then we hit send A, what that's going to do is it's going to send the audio from this send channel here over to um, a, send A, which has a macro rack in it. Uh, if we hit the one from send B, it's going to send it to macro uh, rack B or in send B and same thing for C. So um, you can see if I play some drums and then trigger these, it will send the audio over there. So that's going through the channel. If we click send A, it'll go through send A. If we click send B, you can see it metering on send B and the same thing for send C. So we'll just go back through the channel. Um, basically up here in this section, if you go to send A, send B or send C, uh, these eight controls here are then controlling the uh, macro controls on these sends. So if I select send A and then I hit send A, then I can start macro affecting the whole entire mix. So like this. And then the same for send B, I'll just select send B, then send the audio there. Then so you can do some fancy stuff with that. Um, if we're just playing the entire mix, we can send the entire mix there and affect it. So I'll just play the entire drop from this tune and then uh, select say send B or something. So yeah, you can have um, you can have quite a bit of fun doing that, um, and that pretty much concludes the effect section. Um, in the next section, we'll be going through a little bit of different things like preparing tracks and how to import your stems and um, bounce them out of projects and, and get them into this kind of view. So cheers.
In this section of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can um, get all your stems into this project and how you can set it up to actually uh, play your own tunes live. Um, we're going to give you these four tracks with the um, with, with the template, so you can get started and have have a play with it before you actually have to start rendering your own stuff. But yeah, if you want to play your own stuff, you'll obviously have to go through this process at some point. So I've got a folder full of stems here and they all have the BPMs written next to them and the names. Uh, I'm just going to take these five from a tune called Yeasty Clam Traps and I'm going to drag this into the uh, into the project uh, and then I'm going to hold the command key and that's going to drop all the stems underneath each other rather than next to each other and that's what I want. And now I want to put all of these stems in their respective channels. So for instance, drums needs to go in drums. So I'll move that up, move bass down into bass, move drums to drums, move edits down the bottom. Whoops, move edits down there, move melodies and sounds up. Now the drums are in the drums channel, bass are in the bass channel, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to color them all white just because it's a nice color. And I'm going to have to warp these stems. So I might actually just put these up in... Uh, these channels because at the moment the crossfader is set to the right and all the bass should be over at the right as well So now if we open up all these channels We can have a look at the waveforms and see what's going on here and I know for a fact that this tunes 140 um, Not only because I wrote the track but because I've also labeled it over here on the folder yeasty 140 So I'm gonna put the session at 140 and then play this um, also, I'm gonna turn this live uh, button off up the top and if I put the click track on, we can probably hear that that's 140. Yep, that's 140. That sounds pretty good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these stems, like so. Um, and I'm going to, for some reason, that's not doing what I want. It's not showing me the... Uh, the clip selectors. Okay, here, down here, I have to click envelopes, I believe. And I have to click uh, that warp section as well. So, um, yeah, there was just a couple of sections shut on the clips here and here, but I want them open to warp these. So I'll click here on edits, then I'll select all of the things up to drums just by holding shift. And then I'll click on warp. Um, by default, the warping on this computer is set to repitch, which you can do in preferences just by going into record warp launch and then changing your default warp mode to repitch. Uh, so I'm going to leave it on repitch because that's the way I like to do it anyway. And then pretty much this is ready to chuck into the next view. So uh, if we grab all these and we cut them by pressing Command X, and we go into this view here. Um, I'll just create some new channels here. So I'll create uh, five new channels. And then just here, I'll press Command V and that'll drop the channels, uh, drop the track in there. And then I'll color, color it something different. If the colors show up, oh, there we go. So I don't know, I'll color it like yellow or something. And now what I want to do is I want to name it so when I'm playing I can actually know what I'm playing. Also I'm just going to bank down to here. So we can see we're starting to fill up this box with things now. Um, one of the things you want to put in is you want to duplicate all these effects down there and then you can see when they're duplicated there they show up here on the controller. If we undo that you can see there's nothing here but you want the effects to be there because the way the template's designed is for the effects to be there. So we'll duplicate, uh, if we just highlight uh, the effects here and we press command D you can see they're duplicated down here now uh, now what we have to do is create five different start points you don't have to create five if you see here in this tune we've only created three because it's only a short tune uh, this one only has four but basically these are like uh, um, start points for your tracks so you can bring the track in from different parts uh, I like to write it all in capitals just so it's all neat um, so I'm going to call this one here Yeasty 140 BPM and delete those two labels. We don't really need to have the labels on them that stuff sounds or edits or drums or whatever because we already have that information up here for us in the channels. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate. Um, you can you can do this a few ways. You can duplicate this down to the next layer and you can go through every clip separately and you can change your start points or you can just cut all of that and you can put it back into this view and just figure out where you want it to start from. 
So, for instance, I probably want one to... That, that's from the intro, just in case I want to play that nice piano sort of intro. It's actually like a Rhodes intro. And then there's like another short build up here. And then the drop is there. So um, I believe that is 16 bars before the drop. So I'll cut the intro off and just copy these. I'll just press Command C and then Command V in here. And I'll just name these clips 16, uh, whoops. I'll name this 16 bars. Again, I'll make it uh, capital 16 bars um, <clears throat> before drop one. Uh, then in the next section, I'll have it on drop one. So I'll cut all these off. So I'll cut that off. I think drop one's actually here. So again, we'll copy that out and we'll paste that under it. And we'll call this one <coughs> drop one. Uh, then the next section, I guess, will be before drop two. Well, this whole section here is like a chill section. So I guess I'll just copy everything here, down here, and we'll just call this like chill section. Get rid of that. Um, and then the last one can be... Maybe eight bars before um, last drop. Yep, cool. So we can just cut that, uh, paste that in there and call that eight bars before last drop. Oops, drop, cool. And then I'll just make everything apart from the first line white. And that gives us some sort of visual representation of where tracks start and finish. And then we can just bank. So you see the top one of this is purple. The top channel of this is green or whatever that color is. And yeah, it just keeps everything neat. Um, and then we'd do the same thing for the next channel and so on and so forth until the whole project is full of every track that you want to play this way. Um, in terms of mastering stems, I don't actually do it. Uh, the way that you hear this here is just the way that I mixed it down in my studio and the way that I bounced it. So it just sounds like... You can see that that's metering with about 8 decibels of headroom. If you want to make it louder, you can simply put a limiter on your master and if you if you have the mix right like if you have the mix how you want to hear it then by putting a limiter on your master and just turning it up by that 10 or 12 db or whatever should make it sound the way that you want it to sound anyway. and that way you get the metering to start working as well on the controller um, either way, I usually yeah, just put a limiter on the master and that's the way I play it out. Um, also, you're not limited to just putting tracks in these sections. You can put anything in there. Like you could just uh, say if you didn't want to put your track in there in this kind of method, um, you could just cut things out of it. Like for instance, so if you just wanted to like cut that drum loop, you could do that. Um, you would just go into the clip loop that little section and then you could chuck that in here as well so you can have like sections that loop as well we could call that drum loop um i'll do it in capitals again let's we'll call it loop and then if we just trigger that you can see here um on the channel that it's just a four bar loop or a, a one bar loop or whatever it is and um yeah you're more than welcome you know to to do anything like that um and yeah you don't have to just chuck clips of tracks in there uh, that's just the way that I do it because I sit in the studio for so long working on a track I don't really feel the need to change it when I play live I just feel the need to affect things and actually have something to do while I'm standing up there and um, I do quite a lot of affecting things but I generally don't um, I sometimes play loops 
Uh, if I think it needs it, I'll just cut some things into loops uh, or chop up some archipelas or do something like that. So you have something else to do live. But yeah, the um, yeah, basically you can build on this set quite a bit in your own way and, and make it quite unique. You don't have to use it just this way, but uh, having the template set up and having the controller work the way it does uh, makes it quite easy to, to set up some really creative uh, live sets. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this template and have fun. Cheers.